Peter, your parents came to Australia as a result of the kindness of a stranger. Yes, it was. Uh, they were desperate to get a visa to, to leave Austria when the Nazis marched in. And someone who'd met my mother, I think, just uh, they'd gone to some uh, wine tavern in Vienna and uh, with, a, with a group of friends, and, and then he'd sent her a card uh, afterwards to thank her for it. And she'd kept the card because it was so amazing to get a card from Australia. You know, it was like the other end of the world. Uh, so when the Nazis came and they couldn't get a visa to the United States, uh, she wrote to him and said, was it possible that uh, maybe he could help them to get a visa to Australia? And uh, amazingly, he did. This lunch you had that was the beginning, the stepping stone, if you like, to thinking about vegetarianism, D tell us, how did that take place? Well, I was attending uh, lectures in Oxford, um, started talking with a, another student who'd asked a question in the lecture, and I was interested in what he'd said and you know, whether he thought the answer was satisfactory and so on. And uh, because the lecture finished just before lunch, uh, he said, look, do you want to keep talking about this? We could go to my college for lunch. So we went to his college for lunch, and uh, there was a choice. There were two things you could get for lunch. Uh, there was a plate of spaghetti with some sort of reddish brown sauce over the top of it. And remember, this is England in the sort of uh, late 60s or whatever. Cooking was not a great thing there. Um, uh, or there was a salad plate, you know, some lettuce and tomato and a bit of cheese or bread or something, I guess. So he asked whether there was meat in the sauce on the spaghetti. And he was told, yes, there is meat in it. So then he took the salad plate. So I took the spaghetti and, um, you know, we went, sat down, went on with our discussion about free will. And when we came to the end of that, I said, what's your problem with meat? Uh, you know, why did you ask that question and then take the salad? And he said, oh, I, I don't really think that we're justified in treating animals the way we treat them to turn them into food. And the idea that it was sort of an issue of the way animals were treated rather than the fact that they were killed or, or something like that, that um, intrigued me. And uh, I guess I felt challenged to say, well, what is it that ethically justifies us to treat animals in this way? You know, I still at first thought there must be something and I, I have to find it. And, you know, I was intrigued to look for it. But I read various books about it and works saw what the great philosopher of the past had written about why animals are different and you know don't have the rights or aren't to be treated in the way that we treat animals and it seemed very unconvincing it really seemed like special pleading by people who wanted to justify continuing to eat meat well plenty of other issues were soon attracting your attention let's see how i think i was fortunate to be appointed to a chair at Monash University in 1977 when I was uh, 31 and it was an exciting place to be then because Monash had a medical school which was involved with the first so-called test tube babies. There was a huge amount of controversy about that and that enabled us to set up uh, the Centre for Human Bioethics at Monash. In many areas of medical technology we've got new technologies which leave us with questions that we haven't really thought about the ethical answers to. I was the uh, first director of that centre and was there for something like 20 years. Fur is, is cruel and it's ugly. Because my academic work has been in ethics, I should try and put that into practice. I guess it has led me into some strange situations for a philosophy professor. One end of that has even, you know, has led me into factory farms to protest against the way animals are treated. And at the extreme, I was arrested for trespass. We had had inside reports that the pigs had open wounds on their necks from the chains. I'm certainly not ashamed of having been arrested in trying to stop that. The New South Wales government then later banned the use of those neck chains. When uh, Bob Brown and, and others decided that the, there should be a national Greens party, obviously one aspect of that was forming a Victorian Greens. So I was one of the founding members. But I never thought that I would do anything more than you know, just be an ordinary rank and file member. 
until there was a by-election in Kuyong. Hi, I'm the Greens candidate for Kuyong. Um, I was never going to win. I thought, yeah, it might be interesting. Because Labor decided not to stand a candidate, I ended up receiving 28% of the vote. So when the Senate election came up in 1996, the Greens again asked me if I would head the Senate ticket. I'm actually quite glad in retrospect that I didn't win. I think I probably had a greater worldwide influence, if not an Australian influence, than I would have if I had become a senator. I was uh, quite happy at Monash. I was enjoying my work uh, there. But um, I got a, a letter from Princeton University uh, saying that I'd been searching for a professor in bioethics. In 1999, Renata and I uh, left Australia and went over to live in America. I had a fairly warm reception from the university itself, but the nasty side of it was that the news about my views then got onto a lot of uh, right-wing and conservative Christian websites, and both the president of the university and I started getting death threats. And in the United States, you have to take that seriously because anybody can get a gun. So uh, we did have some security. It's, it's faded, fortunately but it was a little nerve-wracking for the first few months of the appointment. As a philosopher, uh, I thrive on debate and discussion. That's what the field is about. And, of course, sometimes that criticism goes a little bit over the top. And that happened, for example, with a, a book review that I wrote, um, which was a review of uh, bestiality. Um, and it was really, I thought, a fairly neutral review. I wasn't saying that this was OK or a good thing. Just the fact that I reviewed the book in that sort of reasonably neutral way provided another weapon for some of my conservative critics to attack me. I think it was a, a huge beat-up, really. Bioethics is a fascinating field because the biosciences keep moving forward and they keep giving us new possibilities and new choices. For example, as we learn more about genetics, we are going to be able to select our children and that's going to be a huge ethical issue. We're already seeing at universities like Princeton that the student newspaper carries advertisements offering twenty, thirty thousand dollars for eggs from a student who matches certain criteria. 